Hey everyone! Welcome back to another episode of the Kindness Code. I'm your host Ara Wee, and today we're diving into a super important topic: equity and inclusion to the criminal justice system. And we have an incredible guest to help us explore this: Debbie Allen. Miss Allen is a p- passionate advocate for equity and inclusion, particularly in the realm of criminal justice. With over twenty years of leadership experience in state and local governments and justice-focused community-based organizations, she has dedicated her career to balancing public safety with restoring the well-being of communities. She's currently doing groundbreaking work with the Clean Slate Initiative in Colorado. Clean Slate focuses on helping people who have committed crimes in the past but have been crime-free for a while to get a fresh start by clearing their records. She's all about giving people a second chance and making sure that fairness and justice at, are at the heart of the system. We're going to talk about how judgment is made when deciding if someone should get a clean slate and. What fairness really looks like in criminal justice, and how we can all think about equity and second chances in our own lives. Miss Allen, welcome to the Kindness Code. I'm so excited to have you here today. Well, I am super excited to be with you and all of your listeners. So, to start off, can you tell me like a little bit about what you're working in your Dissertation and research right now, and like, what's the major conflict? Sure. Well, I am researching the implementation of the Colorado's Clean Slate Law. This law helps people who have committed certain crimes but have been crime free for a while to set their criminal re- to seal their criminal records. The major conflict that I am studying is whether these obstacles that make it harder for some people, especially those from different backgrounds or areas, to benefit from the law. These obstacles can affect important parts of their lives, like getting a job, housing stability, and access to education. You know, by focusing on this research, I am advocating for kindness and empathy towards those who are trying to turn their lives around. It's about understanding that everybody makes mistakes and deserves a fair chance to start over. Showing compassion can help them rebuild their lives and contribute positively to their communities. That sounds like a really interesting job. So it is. What are your Thoughts on that problem. Well, the way I see it, the major conflict is making sure that everyone who is eligible for Colorado's Clean Slate Law can benefit from it equally. While the law defines clear criteria for which criminal records can be sealed, prosecutors in Colorado have the discretion to object to cases that have been flagged as eligible, they can challenge the ceiling based on certain objection criteria. My study specifically looks at whether these prosecutor objections differ for different groups of people and regions. Sometimes certain groups or people in specific areas might face more objections than others, which could create unfairness and keep some individuals stuck in a cycle where their past mistakes continue to affect their lives. I believe that practicing kindness means helping to remove these barriers so everyone has an equal opportunity. By embracing empathy and fairness, we can create a more inclusive community where people aren't judged solely by their past, but are encouraged to grow and make positive changes. So, how do you think kids or teens like me can start to think about that problem? And what suggestions would you give? Well, I think that kids and teenagers, just like you, can start thinking about this problem 
by understanding how assumptions and bias can affect people's opportunities. For example, I have a friend who happens to be Puerto Rican who shared with me the other day that while she was shopping at a department store, a woman approached her to offer a job driving people around. Think about how many assumptions the woman made in that moment. She thought my friend needed a job or had limited skills just based on her appearance and stereotypes. In reality, my friend is so highly accomplished and well-educated. Similarly, Colorado's Clean Slate Law, prosecutors are presented with thousands of records at once, and they have only 45 days to decide whether to object to sealing someone's criminal record. Because of the sheer volume and the limited time, they might unintentionally focus on certain crimes over others. My study examines which cases are being challenged and whether there's a bias based on demographics or regions. This means that people from certain backgrounds or area might face more obstacles than others due to unconscious bias, which isn't fair. Kids can practice the kindness code by being mindful of how they perceive and treat others. Show kindness by not making quick judgments and taking the time to understand people's stories. By recognizing and challenging our own biases, we contribute to a more compassionate and fair world where everyone has the opportunity to move forward without unnecessary obstacles. I can agree that like not having bias is really important because yeah. if, if everybody was biased, then like it would not be a good world. <laughs> I agree. So you know how a lot of kids care about kindness and fairness? Of course I do. And we want to see second chances, but we also want to make sure everyone's safe after giving that second chance. So what would you say and what suggestions would you give to like kids trying to figure out why someone or if someone deserves a clean slate after making a really big mistake? That's a great question. So bear with me because I have some suggestions and this might be a long response. So I understand that balancing second chances with everyone's safety is important. But here is something to consider. Helping people rebuild their lives and restoring their well-being actually makes our communities safer. When we offer second chances, we're giving people the opportunity to move past their big mistakes and become positive contributing members of their communities. Think about it this way. When someone feels supported and has access to jobs, education, and housing, they're less likely to make the same mistake again. By restoring their well-being, we're not only being kind, but also improving public safety for everyone. So second chances and safety aren't opposites. They work together. By practicing kindness and empathy, we create a community where people can learn from their past and help strengthen our communities. Let me share you an example why second chances matters. Imagine a community health center and a judge. Both want to help people with substance use issues avoid going to jail by sending them to treatment programs instead. They share the same goal, but they define success differently. The health center might say success for this specific person is achieving personal goals they set for themselves. The focus is on the individual's progress and well-being. They understand that in recovery, 
there will be relapses, and that's a normal part of the healing process. The judge, however, might define success as the person completing the treatment program without committing new offenses. Now, a new offense isn't necessarily like committing a new crime like stealing. It also means a relapse. The judge in this context is focused on public safety. So because these two groups use different definitions of success, the data researchers like me collect would tell different stories, wouldn't it? The health center's data might show that people are successful because they're making personal progress. Meanwhile, the judge's data might indicate fewer successes because of relapse. This mismatch can create misleading narratives. If we only consider the judge's definition, we might think the program is failing, even though individuals are making significant improvements in their lives. So my work is called democratizing data. That is working together to co-produce shared definitions of success. The health center and the judge can align their goals and understanding. This means agreeing on what success looks like for the individuals they're helping. So when we collect and interpret that data using the same terms, they create a truthful narrative that reflects both individual progress and public safety. You know, without agreeing on what success looks like, the outcomes can be very confusing, leading to unfair policies that truly don't help. That's why it's really important to work together and practice kindness by understanding and supporting each other's definitions and goals. I would tell kids that this example shows that kindness involves more than just individual actions. It's about working together to understand and support each other's perspectives. By collecting and agreeing on shared definitions of success, we practice empathy and create fair systems that honor everybody's needs. When we help others rebuild their lives through understanding and cooperation, we not only support them, but also make our community safer and stronger. So practicing kindness in this way means listening, collaborating, ensure that everyone's voice is heard, which helps create fairness. So what's like one thing that you found really surpri- surprising Well, like you were researching Queen Slate, like something that made you go, oh my gosh, I didn't think of it that way. That's a great question. And I definitely had that experience. You know, throughout my 20 some years in working in criminal justice, I focused a lot on how the system works while someone is in it. But I hadn't realized just how much a criminal record can affect a person's life even after they served their sentence. There is this term we use called collateral consequences that we use to explain the extra challenges that people with criminal records face even after their punishment is over. You know, in the United States, there are about 45,000 federal and state laws that create these collateral consequences. For example, some laws prevent individuals with certain criminal records from receiving federal student loans. Others restrict their ability to vote in elections Employers can deny job opportunities simply because someone has a criminal record. Another eye-opening discovery was how easy it is for people to access prior criminal records through private companies or the Internet. You know, this widespread availability makes it nearly impossible for someone to leave their criminal history behind and start fresh. 
What surprised me most is how a lack of kindness and understanding can continue to affect people long after they paid their mistakes. You know, by showing that empathy and practice of kindness, we can support changes that help people move forward. Offering that second chance is a powerful way to make a positive difference in someone's life and contributes to building a more compassionate society. So have you ever like had to work through a problem like when some, like, you know, have you ever had to work through a problem where like you help somebody leave their criminal history behind? And, like, start I, ha- I have, and that's been a lot of my work. Um, I would say I've been doing that for the last six years where I have worked on policies and practices to help streamline that process, making it easier for individuals to um, have their criminal record sealed and find ways to make sure that Others who really shouldn't be seeing that criminal record don't see that criminal record so that they can, so that the individual can move forward. Can you share me like an example of that? Sure. So in most states, clean slate has been passed by their legislature. And there's just a lot of rules and steps that are involved in that. And so through my work, I work to bring to light what barriers exist for people to access and benefit from the law. So by example, in some states, um, they don't have this automatic ceiling like Colorado does. Individuals have to petition the court, hire an attorney to have their record sealed. So that takes an enormous amount of resources for that individual. And it can be quite time consuming. You have to work with a lot of different agencies and a lot of different people in this process. And that is overwhelming to people. And so my work is about how can we streamline that and make it so that um, when someone becomes eligible, that the state automatically seals that record as opposed to um, putting the onus on the individual for petitioning the court to seal that record. Miss Allen, thank you so much for sharing your incredible insights today. It was amazing to learn how your research with the Clean Slate Initiative is giving people the opportunity to like rebuild their lives and create a brighter future. Your focus on fairness, kindness, and second chances really resonates, and it's something we can all learn from, whether we're in school or out in the world. To everyone listening, I hope today's conversation has inspired you to think more about how we can all practice kindness by giving people the space to learn from their past and grow. Thank you again, Miss Allen, for being with us on The Kindness Code. Thank you.